Hello and welcome dear viewers, presenting you the latest domestic and international news. From our headquarters of Asmara is me, Hermia Lagermai, inviting you to join us on our tonight's news broadcast. Let's start with the major headlines. Meeting on significance of legal justice based on societal values. Vocational training for use in the Barwa sub-zone. Iran's foreign trade at 99.7 billion US dollars in seven months to late October. And at least 10 dead as Indonesia's Lucky Lucky volcano erupts burns homes. On our domestic news, Mrs. Fozia Hashi, Minister of Justice, held a meeting in the port city of Aseb focusing on the importance of establishing a legal system rooted in societal values. The meeting conducted on 4th November was attended by Ambassador Mohammed Said Mantai, Governor of the region, Mr. Rezana Mikael, Secretary of the PFDJ, as well as village elders and public representatives from 30 administrative areas in the southern Red Sea region. Minister Fozia highlighted that Eritrea's legal system has traditionally emphasized cooperation, social responsibility, harmony and mutual care. She further noted that the primary objective of justice is to ensure peace and harmony, address both psychological and material offenses, uphold systems, and preserve indigenous values by integrating them with the modern legal framework. The minister also emphasized that the legal system incorporates elements of social control, law and order, as well as active public participation, fundamental for building a stable society where security is respected. She called for enhanced public participation to help achieve these goals. Participants expressed their readiness to strengthen their involvement in developing a legal system that fosters a unified understanding at the national level. A three-month vocational training program has been provided to 93 users in Dubarwa subzone. The training covered both theoretical and practical aspects, including computer technology, solar system installation, electrical line installation, video and still camera operation, video editing, and graphic design. Mr. Zumwi Mengstab, head of the education office in the subzone, noted that the program was conducted alongside the user's regular education. He encouraged the trainees to apply the skills they gained to improve their livelihoods. Mr. Jakob Tsagai, Head of Vocational and Technical Training at the Ministry of Education in the Southern Region, urged the trainees to enhance their skills through continued practice and reading. Students from the Amhara and Banaharanet Secondary School in the Amhara subzone have voluntarily contributed 667 units of blood to enrich blood supply of the National Blood Transfusion Services. During the program held from 27 October to 2 November, students from the Amhara High School donated 560 units of blood, while those from Banaharanet High School contributed 97 units. Mr. Abraham Mahari, head of the Blood Donation Service at the National Blood Transfusion Service, said that the initiative that the youth took was the result of the sustainable awareness raising activities by the Association of Voluntary Blood Donors. Parents and heads of various institutions expressed satisfaction at seeing their children embrace voluntary blood donation as part of their culture and called for the continuation of such initiatives. Diverse stay tuned for our international news right after the short break. Iran's customs office initial trade figures for October disclosed by its CEO Mohammad Rezvani Far on Sunday showed that Iran's trade with other countries, including its exports of crude oil and technical and engineering services, had reached a total of 99.7 billion US dollars in the seven calendar months to October 21st. Rezvani Far said that Iran's exports in April to October had amounted to 60.2 billion US dollars including 27 billion in crude oil and mezzet exports and some 0.7 billion US dollars in technical and engineering services exports. 
Imports into Iran reached a total of 39.5 billion over the seven months to late October, including 3.7 billion worth of standard gold bullion imports, he said. Iran had a non-oil trade deficit of nearly 7 billion over the April-October period, showed Iran's customs office figures which also indicated that the country's non-oil exports had increased by 11.48 percent in volume terms compared to the same period last year to reach a total of 88.7 million metric tons. Iran's petrochemical experts, a main source of earning hard currency for the country, reached 15.2 billion US dollars in the seven months to late October, a year-on-year -year increase of 24 percent, the figure showed. China was Iran's largest trading partner and the larger buyer of Iranian exports in April-October, said Vesvani Far, adding that the East Asian country had been responsible for 8.2 billion worth of purchases of Iranian goods and commodities over the period. He said Iran's exports to Iraq had reached 7.3 billion over the seven months to late October, while shipments delivered to buyers in the United Arab Emirates and Turkey had topped 4.2 and 3.3 billion US dollars, respectively. Iran's imports from the United Arab Emirates, the largest re exporting hub in the Persian Gulf, was at 12 billion over the seven month period, said the Iran's customs office chief, adding that Turkey was the third largest exporter to Iran after the United Arab Emirates and China, with some 6.6 .6 billion US dollars worth of shipments delivered to the country over the period. On our last international news, the 1,703-meter twin volcano eruption on Flores Island forces authorities to evacuate several villages. At least 10 people have died after a series of volcanic eruptions took place in eastern Indonesia, spewing fireballs and ash on surrounding villages and burning down several houses. The eruption of Mount Lewotopi Lakilaki, a 1,703-meter twin volcano located on the popular tourist island of Flores, took place just after midnight on Monday, forcing authorities to evacuate several villages. Abdul Muhari, spokesman of the country's disaster mitigation agency, confirmed the death toll at a new conference, adding that 10,295 people had been affected by the eruptions. He said the number of evacuees was still being calculated. The country's volcanology agency increased the volcano's alert status to the highest level and more than doubled the exclusion zone to a 7-kilometer radius as eruptions became more frequent. The agency said at least 10,000 people were affected by the eruption in Ulanjintang district in the six nearby villages of Pupulera, Naokote, Hokengjaya, Klatanlo, Boru, and Borukedang. Residents described their horror when the crater started to shoot flaming rocks at their homes. I was asleep when suddenly the bed shook twice, as if someone had slammed it. Then I realized the volcano had erupted, so I ran outside. Hairdresser Herman S. Might told the AFP news agency. I saw flames coming out and immediately fled. There were ashes and stones everywhere. My salon was caught fire and everything inside was lost, the 32-year-old added. Footage received by AFP showed houses near the volcano covered by thick ash with some areas on fire. An AFP journalist near the volcano said have five villages were evacuated, forcing thousands of people to seek shelter elsewhere. Some wooden homes caught fire and the ground was pockmarked with holes caused by flying molten rocks. The Volcanology Agency warned there was a potential for rain-induced lava floods and told locals to wear masks to protect against volcanic ash. There were eruptions at the volcano last week, the biggest on Thursday, sending a column of ash 2,000 meters into the sky. The mountain had several major eruptions in January, prompting authorities to evacuate at least 2,000 residents. Indonesia, a vast archipelago nation, experiences frequent eruptions due to its position on the Pacific Ring of Fire, an area of intense volcanic and seismic activities. In December last year, an eruption at one of the country's most active volcanoes, Mount Merapi in West Sumatra, killed at least 24 climbers, most of them university students. And in May, more than 60 people died after heavy rains washed volcanic material from Morapi into residential areas, sweeping away homes. 
that month, Mount Ruang in North, in North Sulawesi province erupted more than half a dozen times, forcing thousands of residents to nearby islands to evacuate. The viewers, we are done with the news prepared for this session, and now a recap of tonight's major headlines. Meeting on significance of legal justice based on societal values. Vocational training for youth in the Barwa sub zone. Iran's foreign trade at 99.7 billion US dollars in seven months to late October. And at least 10 dead as Indonesia's Lucky Lucky volcano erupts during storms. That was all for tonight, dear viewers. Thank you for watching and have a blessed night.